Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about all the problems from the latest lead code bi-weekly contest 80. So let's start. Okay, so the first problem is strong password checker 2. So the problem statement goes like this, that you're given a password, as you can see in the input, and you, you just have to check that whether it, it is a strong password or not. For a password to be strong, it has to satisfy these given conditions. So let us talk about these conditions one by one. It should be at least eight characters. It should contain like at least one lowercase, one uppercase, one digit, one special characters which should be among these characters. And no two characters should be like no two addition characters should be same type. Like they are should be same. So that's the overall uh, condition you have to check. And if the password that is given to you like satisfy all the given conditions, it is a like you can say like strong password, else it is a like not a strong password. You just have to check, check that. So it's very simple. What you can just check is that in the first case, you just have to check that it should be at least length like greater than or equal to eight uh, or else it is not a good password. Then you have to just check the occurrence of all of these particular lowercase, uppercase digit and a special character, like how much time they have occurred in the given uh, password. If it is at least once, then it is fine. And no two adjacent characters should be of the same type. So you just have to check that. So all the, all the three conditions you can directly just check out and that's all knowledge. So there is one case to check out all of these special case like special characters. So you can either like do an if else condition to like if the ith character in this string is either like exclamation at the rate hash dollar and so on. Or what you can try to do is that it is given in the form of a string. So you can take the input as a string like the whole string and then, then you can just do a for loop over that. I'll go over the code part so that it, it will become more clear to you. So we have these give different what you can say variables for storing out whether there's a digit like how many times a digit actually occurs a small character uh, a capital character as well as a special character. So what we have done is that if the length is less than eight then it is directly false. You can iterate over then you have to just check that whether two addition characters are same or not. I'm just uh, doing a for loop and just checking that whether two addition characters are present else if they are, then the answer is false. Else, what you can do is that you, you can just iterate over the whole string. If the ith character in the password is a small character, then increment a small value. If it is a large character, the capital character, then increment the capital value. If it is a uh, like between any digit, so increment the digit value. Now for the special character, you can again do a if else condition, like if, if it is hash, if it is dollar and so on. Or else if I have the whole string, you can just do a for loop over this particular string that is using a J variable and just check that whether any one of these character is equal to the is character I'm on. If it is, increment the special character. And the end, if all the characters should be at least present one. So if small is also greater than equal to one, capital digit as well as special, they should be greater than equal to one, all of them, then only this condition will like satisfy to be true. Or else if any one of them is less than like if element is zero, then this will turn out to be false. So this is the overall short logic and the code for the first problem. Okay, let us move on to the second problem. S successful pairs of spells and potions. So it is also not too difficult. What you can see is that you are given some spells and potions and a success value. So what you can actually observe is that in the spells and potions, you are given that you have like you can mix out these spells and potions and the success is also good to you. A spell and potion is considered successful if the product of this strength is at least success. Now you can like take any spell like uh, then like you can pair it with some potion when the product like the, when you do a product of both of these values if it is greater than equal to seven the answer is that they form a good or successful potion uh, and spell product or else it is like it is not. You just have to tell that how many possible pairs you can form. So that's the lot like question how you can do that and the questions are pretty large so you cannot just do it in a most brute force way. So what you can directly observe is that let's say for five you just have to tell that if I have five how many numbers are there such that if I multiply this with this number the value is greater than or equal to seven. So obviously if I have the value seven I know seven and I know five I can easily get that how much number I should multiply that. I should get a value of at least seven because let's say if you just find out at five and this is seven. So if I just multiply five with one, then it is equal to five. But when I multiply five with two, it is equal to 10. So five into one is equal to five, five into uh, two is equal to 10. And I want my success to be at least seven. So I should take any number greater than two, greater than or equal to two, which will satisfy the condition. So if I know how many numbers are greater than or equal to two, in this whole array, 
then I can just form a product of this particular spell and the potions. And I will do the same thing. Now how, how I can get that? I can just sort out this whole array and just do a binary search over it because binary search will give me the first value that is greater than or equal to this. I can just do a lower bound function over this whole vector and I'll just get the first value that is greater than or equal to the value I'm looking for. And uh, I, if I just get the value, I'll just uh, know how many numbers are greater than or equal to that and just print all answer. This one just, there's a one small catch. Let's see that. Okay. Mm, I can check that. Okay. So taking the first example only. So if I have the success value of seven and I have the first spell value, the spell value, no, yeah, spell value equal to five, then it actually, then I get actually the value of equal to one. One. Yeah. So, but the value starts from two. So what is actually happening is that I am just telling out that what is the minimum value I should be multiplying with five so that my successful value, like the success value will become equal to one. When I check with one, the answer is like five only that is small. So I will, I should start with the next number that is five into two. That is ten. Okay. So what you just have to understand is that the value that I'm getting by just dividing this success value with the ith spell value is not the actual value, but you just have to check that whether taking this value is sufficient or I just have to check the next value. Now, what, what you will understand is that if you just do a lower bound on one, then you might get uh, the values of one, but there might be many ones and then they, they will be two. If you do a lower bound of one, you will get this value, but I have to start with two. So you have to just accordingly take these things into consideration. So what I've tried to do here is I have to first sort out this portion array. Then I've taken the size of it, the answer vectors to store out all the answers. Then iterate over the whole spell array one by one. Then find out how much number I need more to get out equal to success, the product of that. Then do a lower bound over this whole portion to get out what is the first occurrence of other. Now I get the first occurrence. Now what you have to do is that this is the value. Okay. Because let's say if I divide seven divided by five, I will get a value of one, but my value is two. Okay. So if I get a value of one, I should know what is the next occurrence of just two. So I just do a value over this whole for loop. So what I'm doing here is that if my position that I got is less than n and the value, like the position and the spell, if it is less than success, because see, I'm taking out the spell, the i spell and the portion, like the position which I got in the portion vector. If the multiplication is less than success, I want greater than equal to success. So I will do position plus plus. I will keep on going to the next value. Now you might want to think that it is going to be O of n. Why not? Because I'm doing a for loop. This might be a very small iteration to just find out the closest value. So it will not take much time, but whenever I get the value, I will get the first sequence of the value from which I get a good answer and all the values ahead of it are fine. So all the values ahead of means that n minus position of i. So position of i minus n, I'll get the, all the rest of the values. I just like store the answer. Cool. The next problem is match substring with displacement. So you're given out a S string as well as a sub value substring actually also and you're giving up some mapping so what you actually have to do is that can you do some conversion in this substring like not just understand it it is not a substring it's just the name of the string is sub so sub string if can you do some changes in this sub string such that you have to do the changes according to this mapping so you can change out like maybe e to three or t to seven so you can do that and you can only do this how what you can say uh, in one direction only like you cannot do this in multiple iteration what I mean by this is you cannot just take like you can just not maybe change e to 3 and maybe there's there's also exists some mapping from 3 to let's say 7 might be there might be some mapping that is 3 to 7 so you know you cannot just change now 3 to 7 so you cannot just go and in a like a map fashion to like going from e to 3 3 to 7 no so you can just do this only this type of change you can only change e to 3 that's it and only like one time change only. So you can just change out this string such that can you change out this sub string such that this string actually becomes a sub string of this particular S string. Okay. That's the whole problem. Now, how you can do that? The thing is that in such a problem when you don't have much of the clarity, you can actually see that the constraints are pretty small, which means that if it is 5,000 the length of this, you can do an O of N square operation. If you do an O of N square operation, what I'm trying to do here is that I will check out that for every substring, can I will like, can I make this a substring of this? I'm just doing it in a very brute force way. 
the only problem is that if I'm like, I know this string, I will just match that whether the four character, the first four character is equal to this character, if like is equal to this string, if I do some changes, but if I do some changes, I just find out in some mapping. If I just store a map to store up these values, then it will become very difficult to do a map, like to do these changes in O of one, because if I store them in map, then it will do an O of login operation. So it will increase the time complexity. So it like it is already O of n square and it is very, very large, like very edge case type of O of n square. If I like multiply this with login also for the map operations, then it will become difficult. But the, the other case can be, why not use some extra space to, because I know that the maximum characters I can go is 256 in the SK value. So instead of making a map, actual map uh, data type, uh, data structure, sorry, what I'm trying to do is that I have made a map using the array, like, sorry, the matrix. Okay. Now 256 to map to 256. Now what I've done is that this is the map first, like every character is actually mapped to itself only. Like I can change A to A, like, because like if I not do anything, if I not change, let's say L to L, Okay, then it is already means that I'm like, I have changed L to L, which means that there's already existing a map that is L to L. I can just say that also. So what I've done is that I have already like, uh, done a mapping of the given I with itself. So which means that for every SK value, every SK value is mapped to itself. So that is one. Then I have iterated over the whole mapping and map the zeroth character with the first character and like updated one. So this actually creates a good mapping, which I can directly access in O of one. Okay. Then I just do a for loop over this original string. That is this string and just check that. Can I cut like, can I match this substring with the first four characters and the next four characters and the next four. If I can match them, I can just do a for loop over this string and just match that. How many characters are matching? If they're not matching, can I like what map does I exist? Like what mapping I exist? I can do a change from E. Can I change that? Like, can there exist a mapping from E to O? Is there exist a mapping because I have the mapping. I can just check in O of one, whether there's a mapping between O to E. If there exists, then it is fine. I can change that. If it doesn't exist, I cannot change that. So that's what I've done. I, if there is no mapping between the ith character and the, the character I want to map to, if they are not, then a check is false and I just break out of the follow. If there exists a mapping, then, then it is fine. You just move ahead. In the end, if the check is true, then answer is true as answer is false. So that is the third problem. Nothing much is just a good first only. The fourth problem count sub arrays with score less than K. So you are given that, uh, an array is given to you like this and the score of any sub array, like all, let's say like the score of any array is defined as the sum of all the elements as well as the length of it. So if you just take out, if you want to find the score of this particular array, it's just a summation of all the elements and, and the length of this. So you just have to tell that given an array of nums and an integer K, Return the number of non empty sub arrays. You just have to tell how many sub arrays are there of nums whose score is strictly less than K. So you are given some K value. That is the score value. You just have to tell that how many sub arrays you can extract out from this whole array that have the value less than K strictly, strictly less than K, not equal strictly less than K. Now, how you can do that? If you see that the constraints are large, you cannot do this in O of n square because in n square, you can directly just check out every sub array and just find the answer. But in this, what you can do is that you can, for sub arrays, there are like some of the techniques only and the one of the techniques you can use here is two pointers. So what you can do is that, let us draw out some example for it so that it will become more clear to you. 2, 1, 4, 3, 5. 2, 1, 4, 3, 5. Two, one, four, three. Okay. Now what you can do here is that you can use two pointers. Now the score actually is the length as well as the multiplication of the sum of all the numbers. Okay. Now what you can do is that you have two pointers starting at the very first. Okay. Now you can just iterate over this I and this is like the last pointer that is I and J. Now keep on moving the, your I to the next element. And this sub array is building for you. Okay. Now, whenever you are like expanding out your window, this, this is like a sliding window technique or like two pointers, you can say, whenever like you, this window is moving, it's increasing. Just keep on incrementing. What is the total sum of the elements I have in this window? So till now I have three and the K value I want is 10. 
okay now what you can see is that also if you have i and j you know you know the length of it that is the length is 2 so the total square i have get is 6 so that is strictly less than k that is fine so i can keep moving my i but how many sub arrays i can get if i like if i ex include this ith number in the answer dot i'm talking about so if i just go one step back so that it will become more clear to you what am i trying to do here is that if my i is here and the length of the sub array that i have or the, the window that i'm forming is of length one the number i have the total sum of the window is two so it is fine that is less than 10 that is fine so this is fine so how many sub arrays if i can make with this number inside a window it is one because this is the one that window that is fine now if i want to just ask you how many sub arrays i can form with this element inside the window and this j is here so keep on mind that i cannot go beyond j because j will actually marks out my territory that is good to go now i can make this a sub array and this a sub array so the answer is like two okay now let's say if i also include this element how many sub arrays i can make i can make this i can make this i can make this so three okay now you might be thinking that you might be thinking that okay uh this sub array is missing because like this is also fine in if i want to take this but i'm going to talk about all the sub arrays that are including this element okay so that's how only they are they are three so now let's say if i make this now the number of elements like the total sum become four five six seven eight nine ten ten into four that is like larger i don't, I don't want that so my i is at this position now let's say and how to move the j now keep on moving the j until again my window become valid if i remove all the last element the sum now becomes uh, 8 into length 3 that is also false because it is also still greater than 10 i want less than 10 so i again will move my element to this window so it is now 4 plus that is 7 7 to 2 14 that is still greater than that so I want less than equal to 10. So I will move this and uh, move here. So it is three into one. That is fine. That is equal to three. That is less than 10. So what you can do is now, if I still want to find out how many sub arrays are there, including this element, but my J is here only like pointing towards this element. So now my window become this. So the only element I can add is this only like that is three. I hope you get the point. And uh, so the only thing that I want to under like make you understand in this problem is that the window that I'm forming, that is like this i and j, the number of sub arrays I can get, which include this element and the number of window, like the window I have is this, is only one. Okay, so I just have to keep track of that also, like what is the position of i and j, and for that particular window, how many number of sub arrays I can form, including this element. You can just add off all of those sub arrays and that's the answer. So I'll take it out of the code part now, so that become more clear to you. So what you can do is that this is sum, this is the result, iterating over this i and j iterating over this whole using a like two pointers technique so as the i increment like as i increment i will just increment the total sum i have like because i told you that as my i move i'll just keep on incrementing how many sum i have now what i'll do is that now i will just check that whether this sum into the window i have because the total score is sum into window if this becomes greater than equal to k then i will just move my j to the left hand like to the right hand side also so this is like moving out j j plus plus and subtracting out that element so it is just like like adjusting the window when i have the perfect window so this is like after doing these two steps i have perfect window that is having the sum and the length of it less than k that is fine now i have a window so i just have to include the current element so the the result will be including the i minus j plus one so whatever is the i is there and whatever j is there this is the window and whatever window I have, the number of sub arrays I can subtract, like I even get from it, is the difference between these two values, that is i minus j. Because let's say, if I have this window, I can, and I want to include this element, so how many, like how many uh, sub arrays I can form? This, this, and this. So between that, the three, three sub arrays. So i minus j plus one. So, so whatever, like is it, so this is actually just the length of the window I want. Okay, so the length of the window is the number of sub arrays I can form and this increment like increment in the result and just print out this one. So that's the whole logic and the code part for all the full problems from the latest lead code contest. Thank you for watching this video.